I'm Daniel and I'm with Mr. Phobia the Prophet and DJ Dash. You guys had a few questions to ask you. What's up, man? Good to see you, brother. What up, pal? So I got a few questions for you. Uh, you guys are in the hip hop scene. Yeah. And I've always been curious to know I would. Can you tell us a little about the hip hop scene here in El Paso? Well, I think the hip hop scene here in El Paso is pretty good, man. It's um I think it needs a little more attention, like from El Paso itself. I think it there's a lot of great MCs out here that don't get the recognition they deserve. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as like the, the brotherhood of it, I think it's pretty all right. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this one's specifically for you. I've been hearing talks that you've actually been working with a couple musicians and going into an acoustic style point of view. <laughs> How did you make the transition from hip hop to being acoustic? Well, actually, before I started doing like the hip hop shows and uh, music like that itself i was an acoustic performer really yeah i play guitar like not a lot of people know that really? um, unless you like partied with me in 2013 and shit <laughs> <laughs> you think you're actually going to be uh putting out one of your future songs maybe <clears throat> yeah well right now like i'm actually working on a new album uh, i'm getting ready for it to come out for the summer it's a summer ep it's going to be called uh luck is dead and uh it's pretty uh, it's pretty there so keep an eye out for that one I'm working on it with, uh, yeah, I'm working on it with uh, Lamano Records, so I'm pretty uh, privileged to be doing that. As far as the acoustic uh, EP is going, uh, that one's kind of like a secret, so I don't know where you heard that from, but I got it. Well, we heard it through the grapevine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Marvin Gaye. No, that, that, that's, that's gonna be that's gonna be more something a little more exclusive. I'm not really gonna uh, do too much with that one. It's kind of just something to. Uh, I'm a huge fan of like spoken word. Like okay. hip hop, and I feel like acoustic has always been a good thing where it captures like the raw vocals of musicians and just instruments, you know. And so I feel that with hip hop and acoustic music, I, I think we can do something really good with it. Yeah, absolutely. Man. So this is my last question, and this actually goes for both of you. So I'm sure you being here, you've worked with a lot of different artists of all different like kinds of different genres. Definitely. You, I know you've worked with the amazing Sabrina James. Yeah, Sabrina James is dope as fuck. Shout out to Sabrina James. Hell yeah, that Sabrina new music James. video is fucking phenomenal. So that's David Carell. Hell, hell yeah, man. So here's my question: How important do you think it is for artists to collaborate with other artists? It's essential, but yeah. you got to do it with the right people too. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's where it is. Yeah, it, it's essential for uh, for like your growth as an artist. I think, but at the same time, I also like to see the artists that challenge themselves, like with no features, no, you know, no. Um, what's the, what's the word? Would you use collaborations? Mm -hmm. But um, no, I think I think it's a pretty big deal. I've been lucky enough to work on actually two songs with Sabrina James. Absolutely. That uh, one of them was on my last EP. That one was called Changes. Now I'm just looking forward to everything that we're doing now. I've been on this new album I'm working on right now. We've I've worked with several bigger musicians um, as far as like they've been in this game for such a long time. Yeah. And I'm super blessed to be doing what I'm doing right now. Right. And now I have the privilege of working with DJ Dash, my man right here, yeah. dude. We've been killing it, dude. Like so, <laughs> just get ready, man. We're about to come at it with El Paso, but always every day, you know. All right, man, we'll keep at it. I want to hear big things coming from both of you, all right? Thanks, man. All right, I appreciate it. All right, I'm Daniel. Phobia. Phobia the Prophet. Do you have Dad. anything else that you want to say? Uh, <laughs> um, on you. Shit, I don't know when this video's going to come out, but um, Black Sheep family, thank you all for being a part of this two-year journey with me thus far. Bigger things are coming. Look out for the next album, Luck is Dead, uh, coming out from Lamano Records. I'm really excited to do this shit. That's pretty much it. Just keep doing what I'm doing. See y'all at the next show, man. There you have it. Hey, guys. I'm here with my show friend, Ethan. He's a drummer from Night Shift. I'm here to ask you three quick questions. All right, for sure. So first question, why the name Night Shift? Um, actually, okay. You know, we work, I mean, this is like our job. You know, this is what we do. This is what, how we want to make our living and whatever. And, and when you work at night, like for other people that have like jobs, <laughs> Um, you work the night shift, and so since this is our job, we definitely wanted to we wanted to make sure it was known, and so we called it night shift because we figured that was plus it's it's edgy, man. It's shippy, like it's cool. <laughs> it is cool. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely cool. That's that's a cool concept. It's like retro. I like that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So second question: 
So which image do you prefer? Kind of more goody two-shoes or bad boy and why? <laughs> you know, I think in my life I've tried a little bit of both at like certain points, but I think that bad boy just always kind of works. I mean the leather, I like like leather jackets, I like boots and, and, and all, all that kind of stuff. Chains. And chain, yeah, yeah, chains and bracelets and necklaces and it just, plus rules kind of suck, so it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know what I mean? Yeah, no that's cool, yeah. I like it. <laughs> You've got a unique style for sure. <laughs> Alright, so last question. I know your band plays sometimes a full acoustic set and sometimes a full electric set. Do you have a preference between those two? And if you do have a preference, why do you? Definitely electric. Because since that's what, I mean, you know, we started as that was our goal. It, the show, when, we, when, when we're sitting down and we're doing acoustic, it's like it's a lot of fun and the audience is involved. But when we're doing, like, <laughs> no, when we're doing, um, on electric, it's, it's, it's us and we get to just give it all and put on a great show and get people involved and the audience involved and it, it's a lot of fun. Plus, being loud is better than being quiet. Like, it's yeah. <laughs> simple. You know what I mean? It's a lot awesome. Of fun. Yeah. No all right, fun. I like your style. All right, thank you so much. No, thank you. For sure. Thank you very much. All right, that was our show for Ethan. I'm with Hector, the father of Ethan from Night Ship. Hector, it's good seeing you, man. Hey, thank you. Thanks. So I had a few questions I wanted to ask you. All right. So, you're a dad. Right. And your son, he's a drummer, great drummer. And I gotta ask you, though. Okay. <laughs> when your son said, hey, dad, this is what I want to do. I want to play music. What was your initial reaction to that? Well, it was great because I I was a drummer also in the 80s and 90s. I was in a band called Sanctuary. Oh, really? And I moved to California with uh, another band with the same singer, really? a good friend of mine named Mark. Um, he started a band in, in San Francisco called Mark for Life. And this is back in the eight, 90s. Okay. And um, Ethan was born in 2002. Okay. So um, when he was born, and as a baby, I used to put him on the... He'd just be in his high chair and I'd be tapping on the table. And he'd start tapping <laughs> with me. Like father, like, like son, right? Like son. So I started him on the drums and playing, you know, pots and pans, everything like that. Oh yeah. And then on his first drum set, since he was six, six years old, he just got his first drum set. Oh, that's really cool. And he's been in another band, so I took, I took him on tour with another band before and see if that's what he really wanted to do. Okay. And, uh, the life of a rock and roll is really hard and strange. I know. And, you know, and he's kept it up since and that's what he wanted to love. And, Started this band, and that's exactly what he wanted to do. So I support him. I'm with him. I don't play anymore. I'm, I'm dedicated all my time with him. Yeah. But that's actually uh, what I was going to ask you next. Is that since your son plays drums, were you the one who got him into drums, or yes, did you yes. think about that? Yes. yes. Well, you kind of answered that. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And you must be very proud. Oh yeah, yeah. He's plays better than me now. You know, he's teaching me. I thought I taught him. Now he's teaching me things. Oh man. So now yeah, the he took the ball and ran with it. The student has surpassed the master. Yeah, so he cool. absolutely took the ball and ran with it. That's awesome. Yep. And, and that's all the questions I had, but I did have one more for you. And um, you know, there's a lot of parents out there who have kids. And they want to. They want to follow the, the the life of being a musician. If anyone meets you and they wanted to ask you, well, what, what do I tell my kid? What would you tell? Them? To take up a harmonica, a guitar, because <laughs> the drums are really loud and really difficult to set up and move around. Even though we love them mm -hmm. and all that, and if they're gonna play drums, you know, be ready for the loudness. Let them play. Let them play as long as, long, as long as they want. You know, it's not easy. There's no rules in drums. Just play mm -hmm. and guitar. The same thing, blisters and all that. They gotta go through. Yeah. But it's worth it. It's worth it. See them grow up with music. Every kid. Absolutely. Hector, thank you so much, man. Thank you. And I appreciate you giving thank us you. your time. Thank you.
The history of the way we access and listen to music has drastically changed in just 130 years. From turntables to cassettes to CDs, and let's not forget the days of Napster and LimeWire, with just a click of a button on your phone. Apps like Pandora, Apple Music, and Spotify have crushed the music streaming game in just the last few years. So my question is, how did you listen to music in high school compared to now? Hey guys, we're here with our good friend Reggie, aka Reginald, Hi. aka awesome guitarist and now bar manager. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. Cool. I got three quick questions for you, okay? Um, so, what is your biggest challenge as a bar manager? Uh, honestly, the biggest challenge is just like any bar, getting people to come to the bar. But uh, okay. you know, I kind of feel like if we just book solid quality shows, give people really good service, and price our drinks just right and then we'll be able to be successful so like what, what percentage of the booking takes up your duties as a bar manager uh, honestly probably like half. half I spend half the day from the, from the time I wake up like around 11 30 uh, just answering emails from our booking uh, inquiries so I get hit like at least six to fifteen inquiries that people wanted to book shows. Yeah. Uh, okay, so like how do you separate band Reggie from bar manager Reggie? Uh well band Reggie uh, thankfully has the help of two other bandmates that help me like uh, divvy up the duties of being in a band. Uh, either promoting shows, booking shows, uh, setting up practices and in the social media uh, when I'm here at the bar I'm just I do almost 100% of the social media for the bar I do almost 100% of the booking for the bar and I still come out and I, I bartend and it's just too bad it's cool man yeah um, I don't know like bar magic just looks like interesting to me man you get to meet a lot of people oh absolutely that's oh, cool you get to be like a therapist yeah yeah you know like a guidance counselor <laughs> okay definitely get all that so talk to us about your music scene resume because i know it's pretty extensive yeah i've been i've been going to shows uh since 1999 uh i started going to shows the first venue i ever went to was cantina la Tuya, which is now i believe it's still called handle it's like it's oh it's crown and eagle now crown and eagle yeah. but uh the punk scene was centrally located at cantina la Tuya. my mom started dropping off me and my friend george from the yeah yeah we were 15. Shout out to George. Shout out to George and the glitter Takana, talk. Ta 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 Koi. Ta kind of cool. Hey, bring that back here. Yeah. He's sending yeah. you back on. Oh, there. that's cool. But uh, I've been going to shows since then. Uh, I started booking shows shortly after. Some of the first shows I would book were at the, the Peanut Gallery. Oh, damn. I remember that. That's what I booked shows at. Surges. Uh, what's that metal place? It's kind of where like, the, the Rock House is yeah, now. Yeah, Rods and Wheels. But it had a different name, right? Yeah, yeah. It was called Chicks. Chicks. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So it was good talking to you, man. Thanks. Absolutely. Catching up, Fred. Thanks for coming in. Uh, another show friend. We're here with our show friend, Javier Martinez, and he plays a big role in the music scene here in El Paso, Texas. Hi, Javier. How are you doing? I'm great. Um, we're here to ask him three quick questions. First question, Javier. How do you balance being in multiple projects? Um, it's really hard. I like to juggle and it keeps on dropping all the balls. I, I try my hardest. Um, I'll start a new project, and uh, hopefully I don't get distracted, but you know, I'm pretty ADD about stuff, and I just try my best, I just try my best. Awesome. Any helpful tips for planning a weekend run? Planning a weekend run? Mm -hmm. 
uh, take your time. Make sure you have enough time between when you want when you have the initial thought and uh, when the actual trip is. Because it takes a lot of work. I mean, there's a 10% rule where if you email 100 venues, you know, 10 will get back at you, and uh, you still got to do all the work finding bands in the city and stuff. It's not an easy task. I bet it ain't. Okay, last question. Of the many aspects of music that you are involved in, which one is your favorite? Oh, uh, my favorite aspect about playing music is uh, those times when I'm alone and I can sit in a room with my guitar and uh, you know experiment and feel free, feel free, com feel, feel completely disconnected from everybody, including myself. Like the other night I was sitting by the fire I made in my backyard and I was just playing guitar for fun, uh, confidently and that's what I love, is that I have that opportunity to just get away whenever I feel like it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Harry. Sure, thank you. Hey guys, we're here with our show friend Adrian. He's the drummer from St. Anthony's Fire. How's it and going? I've got three quick questions for you. All right. So first question, is it any different being in a band with a sibling? Yes, because I mean we have the connection as brothers, so I feel we communicate a lot more, and then we have more of the same musical interests. Uh, a lot of the bands that I like are because of Rudy. And I'm looking over there because he's there, so that's that's my answer for that. So Rudy's a singer, and then yeah, he's, brothers, right? yeah, yeah for he's a singer. <laughs> that's cool. All right, so second question: How do you balance school and being in a band? And would you say? Playing in a band and performing is a good stress relief for you from school? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I know, you know, the beginning of the week, Monday through Thursday, it's all schoolwork, and the weekend is usually when we play, so that's what I'm looking forward to. And practices, you know, it's usually midweek, so I have some relief right there, and then the show is just de stress. Awesome. Because awesome. you're in engineering school, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty tough. <laughs> no, it's, it's easy. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, last question for you. Uh, do you have a favorite favorite drum beat or drum part that you've written? And if you do, why is it your favorite one? Mm. I got the one. <laughs> you don't have to name it for us. I'm just kind of curious if you have one that specifically stands out to you. Maybe it's fun to play, or you love how it sounds, or something. Yeah. So it's actually really simple, but I I, I heard it on a, a beat from SoundCloud. So I just kind of implemented that to the verse of one of our songs, and like I said, it's really simple, but it just sounds really cool. And I mean, the track that was on was really smooth. So it's kind of it's cool how you can listen to something, and it always influences the music that you're making. Yeah, that's true. All right, thank you so much for your time, Andrew. That thank was our you. show for Andrew. Hey guys, we're here with our show friend Stovall of St. Anthony's Fire. How you doing, man? Pretty good. Man. Good, man. Uh, so we're here to check him out at Neon Rose. His band's going to be playing tonight, and we're pretty excited to see him. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and ask him three quick questions. Everything Stovall. Okay, so question number one: uh, How did you discover your passion for playing guitar? Uh, or was that your first instrument? Yeah, yeah. Rico. Actually, it was my first instrument uh, a long time ago, Rico. and everything. Uh, when I was, uh, when I was about eleven or twelve, or oh, yeah, ten, yeah. around there, um, and everything. I remember seeing my cousin uh, play like a play like a Fender Stratocaster, and uh, I sort of just wanted to dabble with it, and uh, and then all of a sudden I just ended up uh, taking off with it. And everything. I think my folks just sort of. Just sort of gave me a guitar just to like play with for a little while and and like I guess like 20 years later here I am. <laughs> Pretty cool man. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if we're born with that little that seed or the passion for music but uh, good thing that everybody finds it in their own way. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so uh, talk to us about how St. Anthony's Fire got started. Um, it was sort of uh, actually actually by accident completely. Uh, I sort of always had all the songs that we that we play right now already sort of like sort of way 
um, but I never really showed him everything, but uh, I knew that I wanted to make something happen with him, so, uh, of course, by actually by inspiration from my wife, uh, Mallory, um, she actually told me to put it up on, on Craigslist, and then, uh, and then we ended up getting our drummer, and then from the drummer we ended up getting the bassist, and then from the bassist that guy knew the singer and everything, and from there it just took off. Nice. Uh, that's sort of, I think, how every band in El Paso sort of forms nowadays. You know? Yeah, we're pretty excited to see. Uh, I know you have a, had some item changes, right? You added uh, Adrian. Uh, yeah, yeah, Adrian. Uh, Adrian, I'm not sure his last name. Is. Adrian Lespron. Yeah, 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 Lespron. And we ended up adding him, uh, I think, back in January. And uh, it's definitely been a really good addition. Like after about a good like two or three weeks, he sort of had the whole set down already by that time. And and uh, and, and I was talking to you yesterday about it and everything. Uh, you know, the the guitar parts were sort of set up you know, for only one guitar, and then all of a sudden he came in out of nowhere and just started running with it, and he just made it work, so. Yeah, Adrian's awesome, man. Yeah, he's an and amazing guitar. He's well as told, but yeah. in his own way. Uh, I'm still pretty pissed off at Adrian for letting Beja die. Beja's like a former local band. Yeah. And they were, they were really good. So I, I, I know what he's bringing to San Antonio's fire. I'm pretty excited to check that out tonight. Okay, so the last question is, other than the obvious, what are some differences between being a solo artist and being in a band? Because I remember you were a, you were a guest on our Mel Shop Box, RIP. So, talk to us about that. Uh, yeah, so uh, so definitely a lot of big differences. I sort of let I sort of let my hair down in this band um, a bit more better and everything. Uh, you know, whereas uh, you know, whereas like, my acoustic stuff was like a lot more uh, a lot more subdued and everything. And I sort of talked about you know everything going on in my life and. And then like feelings and you know all that stuff and the whole mushy stuff and everything. But but with this band, I can sort of like you know sort of sort of cut loose and everything. Sort of uh, sort of show like a different side of myself, you know, that not many people see anymore. So I think that's uh, I think that's sort of like the like the difference between my two projects, and I like it. Nice. Uh, any plans for still doing solo stuff? Uh, <laughs> I haven't played a song since August and everything. So maybe. Maybe something in the in the future and everything. I know that I've been sort of uh, dilly dallying a little bit with it here and there. So uh, maybe maybe in June or July. I'm not sure. But nice. Well, <laughs> one thing for sure, we're excited to see you guys tonight and give it up for our show friends. Stop. Hey guys, we're here with our new show friends, Tomas and Becca of TGTG. They're on a pretty extensive tour, currently, right? Yeah, currently. Okay, so, like, how far are you into it now, time wise? We are three years in now, just over now. Yeah. That's that's living the life right there, man. Being on the road and living out the fat of the land. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, so how would you describe your sound to like a new showgoer? Somebody's been on a new show for some. I like to say it's indie rock with a punk rock heart and and a little bit of Latino flavor in it. Yeah, yeah. I like to have a Spanish undertone. I'm Peruvian, so like the influence of growing up in a Spanish household really like seep into. I like I like to let it seep into the style. Yeah, I can already hear. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we were just uh, having dinner. We heard mariachis and mariachis are like. Speak to my soul, man. <laughs> okay, question number two. Talk to us about your 10 year plan. <clears throat> Alright. <laughs> so, it's a 10 year plan to travel the world, spread positivity, and inspire people to follow their dreams. Uh, it's called the Positive Energy World Tour. And the reason this exists is because uh, with my last band, uh, we had moved to Nashville to pursue the industry. And like many artists, the industry is not for them. You know, there's a lot of molding that goes on to be more marketable, more commercial. I couldn't do it, so I quit the band. And um, I've been from band to band, I've been from job to job. My favorite times have been on the road, meeting people, hanging out, touring. So I decided, well, everybody's living out of their car nowadays anyway, like the van life stuff. Maybe I can do that with my music. I know how to book shows, I know how to make merch, I know how to record my own music. Why not? There's nothing holding me down, let me go for it. So. Upon planning that uh, that life and like 
I started recording my solo album. It was gonna be my solo album. But during the recording of the album, I met her, and we fall in love. And I'm like, well, you gotta come with me. And one of the new things- New material, new songs. Exactly. So one of the things that made me fall for her is that she said, she's always wanted to travel the world. And I'm like, well, I'm about to, I'm about to live this life of like living out of my car and traveling the world. Uh, I can teach you some instruments and you can come with me. What do you say? The exact words were, hell yeah. Nice. So here we are. Almost like an idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so do you have any plans for taking your music like international across the pond either way? Oh yeah. It's the Positive Energy World Tour. So the way we do it is we do it as we can afford. So the first year we could only afford to be in the States and the second year too. And then we went into Canada for a little bit. Um, so we've been to Canada a few times, and now we've gone to 49 states, including Alaska, which we're going to Alaska again this year. But as we as we progress with our band name and we meet people, uh, we make connections to go overseas, and we just nailed our first overseas thing, and it's Japan in September. We're going to Japan. Um, we met a band down in South Florida. Their name is Coffin Varnish. If you want to check them out, they're really cool people. And they're like, we toured in Japan last year, and we want you guys to come with us. All you have to do is uh, save your, uh, save up for a flight, and you can come. So we did that, and uh, we had some crowdfunding. So thank you to everybody, all the supporters for that, because now we're going to Japan in September with Coffee Varnish. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm excited for you guys. It was really good to meet you guys. We're really excited to catch your set and jump out to your sweet. Maybe do some flamenco. Oh, oh, okay. You want to? You want to? Okay, I'll yeah, bust out. TG, a bit. TG, man. You gotta make sure to check him out. Uh, look, look for him on Facebook and give him a like. Yeah, Facebook and Instagram. It's at TGTG TG Music. And we're also on Spotify. Great to meet you guys. Yeah, nice to meet you too.